the Artemis. It is a secret hospital for criminals. I thought you were done with all this. I got out, but you know how it goes. You're never out. Not up here. Hotel Artemis is a defunct sort of 1920s uh, Los Angeles hotel. A criminal is injured in the act of committing a crime and can't go to a normal hospital, would come to a place like this. Each one of these characters is coming to this hotel to be fixed up. You have to apply and get a membership, probably wait very long until your application is approved. It's an underground hospital for criminals. I thought this place was a myth. We've been here for 22 years. This hospital was built on two things, trust and rules. California history. Hotel Artemis is the story of one night in a secret underground hospital for criminals in Los Angeles in 2028, and what happens when the wrong group of people are trapped there whilst the biggest water riots in LA history are going on outside. The largest civil unrest. Three minutes. Open the ball now! Oh, that's real nice. You don't want it. No, I really do. Waikiki and Honolulu are two bank robber brothers that we meet at the beginning of the movie. Waikiki, played by Sterling K. Brown, is the older of the brothers, and though he was supposed to be retired from the game, his uh, messed up younger brother keeps pulling him back in. goes wrong. It's in the midst of a riot that's going on at the same time, and there's sort of a private law enforcement that is policing the rioters and also stumbles upon our bank robbers who get injured in the course of the bank robbery and have to take shelter and refuse away from all of the things that are going on in Los Angeles at the time. I got a plan. I need to make a call. Hello. How can I help? Fellas, everybody's gonna get fixed up. I play the nurse, and she's been living in this uh, hotel slash hospital triage center for gangsters. And she lives to take care of people and to help them. She's a woman with a tragedy in her past that we don't know about at the beginning of the film, who we grow to learn has kind of created this world in order that she doesn't have to confront the stuff of her past. Get out of there! What's happening? Shock. The vital's not responding. She's the only medical personnel in there. She's got these futuristic robots that help her do all the medicine, all the surgery, surgeries that you'd normally need an entire team for. Uh, she can do on her own. All right, now verify your memberships, and we're off to the races. You're peachy. How about the no good neck? Uh, it's fine, too. You're up, neck hole. Swipe. No dice slick. This thing is covered in blood. It's always covered in blood. I have the fucking chips gun, look! Yeah, well, that could be from any dark room in the country. Fine. I'll pay you then, all right? Ah, that's against the rules. Yeah, I gotta run checks. You could be a serial, you could be a peed, you could be a terrorist. There's plenty of other hospitals out there. Where the cops are fucking looking for us. You see, that's your job, lady, to fix people like us up to open the gate! Are you raising your voice to me? That is also against the rules. Hotel Artemis came about from just a huge number of things coming together at once. One of it was my love of Los Angeles. Another was the character of the nurse, which just came into my mind. And another was just this high concept idea that what if there was an underground secret hospital for criminals? And for some reason, those three things congealed and became Hotel Artemis. Right there in the membership back under, do not kill the other patients. Look, out of the way, Buke, move! Fuck you! Right. I'm sick of your shit! I never asked! You know why they call him Everest? Yeah, I think you do. The nurse runs the Artemis, but she can't do it on her own. And she has her faithful orderly, Everest, to help. He's kind of my companion in the movie, his nurse's companion in the movie, which is pretty funny because he's about 6'4 and pretty massive and I'm super tiny. He just is there for her whenever she needs. He's got a real heart of gold, I think. He was a former gang member uh, who the nurse helped out when he was younger and turned his life around. So I think that's now he just has a strong sense of loyalty to her and, and wants to kind of follow this path uh, of being a healthcare professional, and that's his new passion in life. You see that badge? That means I'm a healthcare professional. 
You're an arms dealer, right? Well, don't push my buttons. Don't you do that. If there is a traditionally bad guy role from the beginning of this movie in a hotel full of bad guys, then Acapulco is it. You might want to buy some scented candles or something, because it smells like somebody died in here. They did. He's an arms dealer, and uh, he's in there because uh, he's an incredibly lascivious man, and he's had his eye scratched out, um, and he's been stabbed in the back, assumingly uh, by a prostitute. Hey, are we safe in here from doomsday? I mean, are, are these walls fortified with anything? I, those people are animals. They just want clean water. Well, then they can get a fucking job and pay for water like the rest of us. They don't like that? You one of those bleeding heart types? Well, hey, cops kill poor people, poor people kill cops. That's the circle of life. Hakuna Matata. Easy for the robots. Swimming in your Alta Canal. Take one in an hour, and then after that, you can go. All right. Uh, hey, uh, my TV's broken. I want to watch your riots. Has an old one in the game room. It's hardwired. It should be working. Right, hang on. You want me to go out there with the criminals? Hakuna Matata, buddy. Oh, that's cute. He's very entitled throughout the course of the film, and he gets more frustrated and uh, incredulous, you know, as the movie goes on, because everything, uh, for, for such an entitled person, he's not getting anything that he wants. And by the time the movie ends, you see the truly dangerous level of toxicity that comes with him being a rich, privileged, white male arms dealer. And this woman, she's a business. If you knew what she could do to you with just that cup of coffee, you're lucky this place is rose. Nice is an interesting combination of kind of like a fantasy, almost like a movie cinematic fantasy, uh, like a Brigitte Bardot or somebody fantasy of uh, somebody who's absolutely beautiful, incredibly enticing and seductive, and um, a killer. Uh, I like to play a strong female character that way, but also I like her vulnerability, and I wanted to find those colors for Nice. And when I was reading it, it just all made sense, and I wanted to explore that world where, you know, you're good at something, and it's safe, and it's hard to get out of it, even though it's not the best thing for you at the end. The Artemis isn't safe for us, because it is. It's a portable vault. Worth about 18 million. During the bank runs. My brother comes across a little shiny pen, which actually isn't a pen. It's a vault. It's a miniature vault that is housing precious Yakusha diamonds from the Wolf King, who is sort of the mob boss of Malibu, played by Jeff Goldblum. And uh, he's not the kind of man that you want to cross. Wolf King's probably going to want those back. OK, this is a real problem. He's here. Open the gate. That's against the rules. Rules? Without the rule breakers, honey, where would you be? The Wolf King is the guy who runs LA. He runs the Malibu mob. He has been running the city since the early 70s. And he's also the guy that owns the Artemis, even though the nurse works for him, and the two of them made a deal way back to create this place. Everybody's called by their names, by the suites of they stay in. I am told, once I get involved in the circumstances of the movie, by the nurse, hey, I'll call you Niagara because you're going to stay in the Niagara suite. I guess my ballroom days are over, baby. Showtime. Jeff Goldblum playing Niagara. Um, this, uh, you know, super suave uh, Malibu gangster that has the kind of Jeff Goldblum flair that nobody else in the world has. He really invites the audience into his character psyche. I've been a massive admirer of his work for years, and, you know, I mean, he's had such an incredible career. I've seen him on stage and, of course, on film, and I just feel like to meet him and to work with him is even more inspiring because he's just so authentically himself. Crosby, played by Zach, is his try-hard son the seventh of seven children who just can't get a break impressing his dad. He probably feels a little bit unacknowledged, unappreciated, and it's created, I think, for him quite a complex. I don't think his father gives him much. I don't think his father makes him feel particularly a uh, part of the power that he wields. I think that they're very separate things, and I think Crosby spent a lot of his life aspiring to that level of power and hoping that his father would kind of include him in it, and he just hasn't for whatever reason. You got like a plan. You're my brother. I love you. 3D printing complete. I got the next best thing. I got a gun. This is my brother in the film, Sterling K. Brown, Waikiki, Honolulu. 
Okay. Hotel Artemis. That's two. Yeah. Get out. Thank you. We have been best friends for 10 years. We met doing theater together. Uh, but we always were acting adjacent to each other. <laughs> like, it was never like they put us together and allowed us to, like, have these developments of, of characters that actually talked to each other. Two days, he had to either carry me, drag me. So I really wanted to make sure that we had that trust. And that's the one thing that I know we have, like, in our lives and we have always had in our lives. It's just that trust of each other. And it was just fun to explore every single day with him and to see all the different levels of what he built into his character. It just was a fun dance. It really was. It was really great. Hotel Optimus is a love letter to Los Angeles, cliched though that is, and so I fought tooth and nail to be able to shoot it here. It's a city that I moved to eight years ago, that I'm still in the honeymoon period with, and whose history means an awful lot to me. And uh, I wanted all that to be reflected on screen. We're on the roof of the Artemis, which is in real life the roof of uh, the Rosalind Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Shooting on the roofs of LA is a genuinely magical thing for the crew and for the actors, and you feel it in the film. It's also problematic if you remember uh, on your first day of scouting that you are really afraid of heights, which is what happened to me. I'm on the roof where you told me to be. The best deal you ever get is having actor-directors work with you because um, they really understand the exigencies and they know how hard it is and they understand that we are all here to serve them. I mean, that's what I say to Drew every day, which is like, oh no, I'm just here to serve you. And we all are, we're all 175 of us or however many people on our crew are here really to try to get whatever it is that's in his head and in his heart and put it on screen. Drew's awesome. I mean so cool and easy about everything. I mean, I think he's got a very clear vision of the story he's telling, obviously, because he wrote it, but uh, that doesn't always translate to execution. And one of the things that I feel uh, really great about is uh, the ease with which he's able to communicate and get things done. He is incredibly prepared and has insight into all realms of production from costume to makeup, obviously script. I really love directors who will let you collaborate, and Drew is all about collaborating. If something feels odd, if it needs a line, or if you need to take away a line, he's just all up for it. He's just so open-minded, and you don't always get that. Gee, I think he's talented and knows what he wants, gets what he wants. He had clear vision, and it's such a joy to work with a director who has such an interesting, but yet original, and quite something that's different, that's not been done out there. There's a war zone up here. Am I gonna make it out of here? We can do it together. I hope audiences take away from Hotel Artemis is a movie that was both a really great visceral time that was funny and exciting and dangerous, but also a thing that stays with them both emotionally and that they want to revisit because there's a density of kind of detail in the film that they want to go back and live in. It felt really unique and it felt really like a bold world and the people that were involved with it, obviously. I just love that kind of uh, mystery because you don't know who to root for. You don't know what anyone's really there for. You don't know where the twists and turns are gonna come, but you're gonna have a good time. It's kind of this new cool premise. I mean, I can't think of a movie that's ever, you know, been done like this. It's really just portends what's about to happen in the future. Visiting hours are never. Busy night at the Artemis.